Good day, YouTube. One MJ here, and welcome back. Right, Friday evening here in Australia, and things are looking a little bit grim, unfortunately. But you know, more so for the altcoins than anything. Uh, but look, even Bitcoin's holding on by a fine thread at the moment. And you know, again, never financial advice. Just my opinion is on the charts. Technically, it looks like Bitcoin is going to sink to a new low. And look, if it does break that kind of thirty thousand dollar barrier with an actual close, it's probably likely that Bitcoin's going to get down to around about twenty four thousand ish. I mean, it might come down to twenty nine thousand and sort of bounce there. We can still hope for that kind of level twenty nine twenty eight. But realistically, it's probably going down to around about 24, if not maybe down even to 20, and that's going to be quite scary. But anyway, 1.3 trillion hanging in there, only just, but the overall market is down 2.5%. 45% dominance for Bitcoin uh, holding in there, and gas prices around about 27. But look, we can see it's not looking pretty right now. You know, things are quite low, and again, most likely going to go down a fair bit if Bitcoin breaks below that kind of 30, you know, even 29, 28,000. If it just wicks down there but holds it, they're not so bad. But the weekend is upon us, and you know, maybe the worst is sort of still yet to come. We'll have to wait and see. Look, has anything done well? We can see a couple of things did well, but nothing too crazy. Anything kind of stand out? All right, XEM had a good uh, move. Ravencoin, HBAR, Stellar, a couple of all right moves there. And then really, I mean, we're into very, very slight gains. So obviously the losses are probably going to be not so favorable then. Let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. Telcoin, 20%. Uh, Rune, Thorchain, we've got a story about them. So they're down 15%. Uh, a bit of a hack going on there. Looks like Axie Infinity, Engine. I mean, look, a lot of coins are, uh, yeah, down Oh, that's the thing with the altcoins is when Bitcoin is not doing well, altcoins are getting absolutely slaughtered. Hence why I've been saying, and it's never financial advice, just be very careful with the altcoins. I did buy some altcoins the other week, but if Bitcoin just continues to go down, then I really will just be focusing on Bitcoin and see, I see a clear trend change. But again, if Bitcoin just continues to hover around that $30,000, $29,000 range, Things aren't so bad, but it's if we dip below that, that really does get ugly. And let's go over to the Bitcoin chart and have a look. So we can see, I mean, look, the RSI, it's been broke. And let's have a look. Uh, yep, and the MACD's been broke. So rightio, things are looking quite ugly. Let's get rid of this. We can see it broke down there. It did cross over. It broke below this red line. So it is not looking pretty. And even more so, let's have a look. It has broke down to the low side of the Bollinger Bands. Hasn't gone so much below it now, but it is literally sitting right at the bottom of those Bollinger Bands. So what we need to do now is again, have a look. Can we hold this sort of 28,000, 27,000 ish dollar level? If we kind of wick down here, it's not so bad, but what we can see is really, it is currently sitting right on the line of where the lowest candle closes were. So. If it starts to close lower candles, things are getting grim. Again, maybe we can come down and get a bit of support at this $28,000 level, but really it's probably more here, about the $24,000 level. And if that doesn't hold, then we're probably going back down to around about here. I doubt it'll go quite down to there, probably more so down around about here, the $22,000 level. But this is really where I expect it to get to and fairly quickly if this kind of doesn't hold, and particularly if we break this line. Unfortunate, but true. At least that's what the technicals tell us. The technicals don't always know, and maybe it's time for the whales to go, yep, this is what I wanted. I've shaken out as many people as I can, because they don't really want Bitcoin to go down too low, unless they've got a whole stack of cash waiting on the sideline, because otherwise it means the Bitcoin that they do have suddenly becomes worth less. So again, I think this weekend will be you know, the telling tale, and unfortunately at the moment it looks like it's going down. All right, a couple of interesting news stories. Not a whole lot of news really, it's just the price of uh, Bitcoin that we've got to look at. All right, PayPal has raised cryptocurrency limits for its US customers to 100,000 per week without an annual purchase limit. So again, things are still on the kind of up in some areas, more the technicals. Unfortunately, the price is going the other way. All right, another one, Spike Lee directs 
old money is out new money is in now that's a commercial for cryptocurrency atms he's always been known for sort of forward thinking and a pretty progressive kind of guy and he likes crypto now the interesting thing is to see you know if people will still like crypto as the price is going down because most people only like it when it's going up now for me I generally like it the other way around when it's going down because I can buy more at a cheaper price and I've said this time and time again and I'll continue to say it if Bitcoin does get down to 20,000 yes it's gonna hurt my portfolio is gonna be absolutely crushed I'll still be in the profit though I won't have lost money but I will just be buying as much Bitcoin as I can as long as it continues to go down and once I see that sort of uptrend excuse me and a clear uptrend that's when I'll start jumping back into the altcoins because unfortunately the altcoins are going to get hammered as long as Bitcoin keeps going down and I don't know if Bitcoin's just going to drop straight down to uh, some level and have a v-shaped recovery that helps out the altcoins unfortunately I think Bitcoin's going to drop down to a level make everyone think that's the bottom then drop down to another another level make people think that's the bottom and then probably drop to one more level to make people uh, have just completely given up and then that's when the bottom will most likely be in but again never financial advice right payments platform square so Jack Dorsey's popular mobile payments platform square is branching out with a new business venture that will be focused on Bitcoin I mean we all know they were focused on Bitcoin anyway but this is where it's interesting now details were thin on the ground in Dorsey's July 15 tweet but the company CEO said that it would launch a platform for developers to create non-custodial decentralized finance projects built around Bitcoin now really I think stacks and there's something else I can't remember what it is they're the only really things built around the Bitcoin chain other than Bitcoin and so to get some decentralized finance on the actual Bitcoin chain that would be good and even better non custodial so they're not holding it you keep the uh, funds in your wallet they can just kind of leverage off it and use it and not leverage in the bad way leverage in a good way so interesting times you know again really ethereum was built because bitcoin just refused to kind of modify anything and allow any kind of side chains and all the rest of it and that's where uh, ethereum came from and then from ethereum came polka dot and cardano and things like that can bitcoin you know move away from just being that one thing i mean they slowly are now and really just get everyone to suddenly build on bitcoin I'm not so sure I don't think Bitcoin can scale fast enough you know they do have the lightning network but I don't know if lightning network has been tested you know against thousands of transactions being made per second if not hundreds of thousands or millions of uh, transactions being made per second because that would be interesting but it would be nice to have some DeFi uh, happening on Bitcoin that would be quite nice all right seems like Ripple might have got a bit of an up here so Ripple have been allowed to dispose the SEC official. So the SEC argues that Ripple token XRP was an unregistered security. And the judge wants to see what William Hinneman has to say. So he was the guy that came out and said Ethereum uh, was sufficiently decentralized uh, to not be a security. Now Ripple, it seems like, are hoping he may have similar thoughts on XRP. Ooh, that's going to be a hard one considering about half the tokens are currently held by Ripple. Is that enough? It's not quite half though, it's under half. But, and again, I haven't you know, looked at this as of today or even the last couple of weeks or couple of months, but it wasn't that long ago that they were holding almost half of all the tokens, uh, all the XRP tokens were held by Ripple uh, and it's kind of subsidiary subsidiaries subsidiaries I can't even say that word subsidiaries <laughs> so yeah it'll be interesting to see because they've been told yep they can get him to uh, come and uh, you know go to court but is he going to give a favorable XRP determination or is he going to say no they're definitely uh, a security because they are not decentralized enough all right last but not least so Thorchain we we're speaking about it they had an attack now Thorchain was touted as this great project and you know a lot of hype behind it and I was kicking myself for not getting into it 
but this is one of the things that makes me glad that you know I, I kind of didn't ape into it. So Thorchain attack drains protocol of estimated seven point six million dollars. So they said around about four thousand ETH, but there's multiple reports sort of coming out there. So it says here Thorn Thorchain announced it has been attacked, and estimates vary from seven point six million to twenty five point one million dollars. So it'll be interesting to see number one how much was actually taken. And then number two, what they do with those those losses, you know, are they going to reward the people who've been lost with Thor, Thor chain tokens, which you know may or may not, you know, help them, particularly if unfortunately everyone gives up and says Thor chain's no good. I don't know, but this is why you have to be careful with jumping into new projects. Now, again, I'm not saying I've never jumped into a new project. I've jumped into a, uh, a number of them, particularly back in 2017 ICOs and every single ICO that I got into, and I'm not kidding, every single one burnt me. And so really then I was just like, oh, I'd rather just invest in projects that have been around for a while and you know have got history and haven't been hacked and things like that, or maybe have been hacked and have managed to bounce back and become even stronger again. You know, Yearn Finance, uh, that got hacked uh, early on and has come back and is still quite a good project. And again, I'm not uh, endorsing that project at all. I don't use it whatsoever. But that is a project that has been hacked that maybe, uh, you know, I would consider getting into. Uh, a lot of the projects, unfortunately, once they've been hacked, they rarely ever uh, manage to come back. And particularly if then there starts to be suspicion around the hack being maybe more a bit of a, roll, a rug pull. And I'm not saying that this was a rug pull, but it's just something that, you know, sometimes sort of gets around that it starts to look like it might have been a rug pull. And then all of a sudden those projects just completely and utterly die. And again, I'm not saying Thorchain has done that. I'm not saying that's what this is. But again, there's been reports of, oh, it was 25.1 million. And now it's reports of no, only 7.6 million. So... Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. So again, please, you know, anyone watching my videos, this is not financial advice. Uh, well, this probably could be considered financial advice. Be very, very careful in what you invest your money in. You know, really, you have to do your research. And, you know, even though it sounds really new and it's done all these great things, if it doesn't have time behind it, it's hard to really judge whether the money's worth it. In the short term, it might look amazing. You know, you could have something that goes for six months, maybe even a year, with no hiccups whatsoever. And then, unfortunately, you know, 12 months into it or 18 months into it, something awful happens. Now, things like this can happen much later in life as well. It doesn't mean that it's always in the first few months or weeks that it happens, but that's generally when it happens. Things that have been around for longer generally have had really good code audit reviews and they're constantly still building on it and still securing it from there. So yeah, just be very, very careful. Again, I really wanted to get into ThorChain. I was kicking myself because I didn't because it did so well. Now I'm not kicking myself so much because again, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe they bounce back and you know they are really strong from here. And in all fairness, I hope that is what happens to ThorChain but maybe they don't as well. And then that means anyone who's still invested in ThorChain and it did drop, I don't know, 15% uh, today, maybe they then lose even more. And that's unfortunate. We don't want that happening to anyone. And I, le I legitimately mean that. I don't want that happening to anyone. All right, like I said, bit of a quick one today. This is really what I'm focused on. And unfortunately, I am sort of worried about is that if this breaks, I think we come down to here pretty quickly around about this kind of 29-ish, $28,000 level, more so 30, that'll really get tested at first, so around about here. But if that breaks, then it is kind of this 29, $28,000 level, and if that goes in, it's straight down to 24, and that may not be enough to even hold, then it's probably more likely 22-ish or 20,000. And unfortunately, the scary thing is, if this was the top, and it may have been, I don't think it was, but again, I don't know everything and I don't offer financial advice. If this was the top and our last low was 3,800, it's entirely possible that we might be coming down to test, you know, 12,000, sort of $8,000, maybe even lower. And that's going to be really scary. That really will hurt. All right, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but, you know, I don't want to you know sugarcoat things it's not looking great at the moment but again for me i'm just not panic selling if i've missed the top 
then I've missed the top I'm going to continue to buy uh, all the way down uh, to the bottom and then all the way back up until we get into new all-time highs don't get me wrong I'm leaving cash on the side in a downtrending market I'm putting some into Bitcoin some into Ethereum and then having cash on the side. So again, let's say I put $100 a week, I would be putting probably about $50 a week of that into Bitcoin and Ethereum and then having $50 on the side, waiting until I feel like we've found a bottom and there's a clear trend reversal. And when I see that clear trend reversal, that's when I'll start, again, still putting money into Bitcoin and Ethereum, but that's when I'll be going uh, heavier into the alts because that's where the really life-changing gains will be made, but again, you know, I need to see a clear and obvious trend and it won't be simply, you know, Bitcoin comes down to $27,000 and bounces uh, back to $30,000. That's not a clear trend. That is just a bit of a fake out. I'll, again, as long as Bitcoin's trading in and around this kind of, you know, 30000 to $28,000 level, uh, I don't think the bull run is over. But if we break that $28,000 level, I think it's clear the bull run is over and we definitely are in a bear market. And who knows how much lower we're going to have to go to find the bottom. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment. But if you are, congr congratulations to you because you've outplayed the market. And I'll see you next time.